We're going to welcome in Kevin Minnick of NJ Advanced Media, as we do each and every week around this time. Good morning, Kevin. Hey, Sully. How are you? What's happening, man? Oh, you know, it's uh, another gloriously looking day outside. So yeah, we're ready to play some football. <laughs> seems like it's every weekend. It's kind of gray and overcast and rainy, but hey, that's the fall in Jersey. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, it's been uh, this has been one of the most brutal falls I think weather-wise we've had to experience on Friday nights, and Saturdays haven't been too bad. But uh, there was know, one fall, I, maybe it was like two or three years ago, where like four weeks in a row was just torrential rain on Friday nights. Yeah, it happens. It happens yeah. from time to time. So uh, that's all right. Well, Dave, you and I had the uh, the one. Remember the one game? It was EHC, EHC yeah. Gammy. Oh Gammy. my it God! Like, it was like, like it's like a hurricane out there. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was like a full blown nor'easter, sideways I, rain. I lost my notebook because it it, it, <laughs> it, it was a uh, it disintegrated because yeah. of all the rain. It was insane. Yeah, that hey, that's you run into that in the fall in Jersey for sure. Still with us, Kev? I'm with you. Yeah. All right, but. <laughs> So give us your thoughts on uh, we're, we're just about into, I guess, playoff seedings will be announced, what, tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow morning they'll uh, they'll meet up at the, in Robbinsville, the NJSIAA headquarters, uh, and I think probably by uh, by noontime or so we'll, we'll pretty much have the fields together and uh, we'll see, you know, no one, you can sit here this morning and try to figure it out, but it's not <laughs> worth it because, uh, you know, you just don't know with these uh, different formulas that are, you know, involved. So it's a, uh, you know, you win your game, you win by a convincing margin, then you sit and wait. So it's a waiting game for for most, for, for a, a lot of teams to see if they're in and, uh, you know, for other teams just to find out where they're going to be when the field's announced. Do you know offhand who, who are some of the teams on the bubble? Well, I mean, if you look at the, uh, the, the ratings going into last night, um, you know, I think the, the one – the one team that just jumps out at you uh, is Cherokee. And, you know, Cherokee going in there last, last night was number 15 in South 5 and, and hadn't won a game. Um, you know, they lose last night to Lenape. And uh, with a couple other things that happened last night, you know, it, it's possible Cherokee still gets in this in this tournament without a win. And I can't remember a, a, a playoff team winless ever. So, um that's that's the one thing that really jumps out at you. And then, you know, last night a lot of teams, you know, they knew they kind of had an idea what they needed to do, and what they needed uh, other teams to do as far as getting some help. A, a team like Del Ran, uh, six and one in South Two, was uh, you know at seventeen, so they needed to definitely win the game. They needed to convincingly win the game, which they did, fifty-five to nothing, over Princeton, and uh, and get some help from some other teams, which. It looks like is going to happen. So, uh, you know, I think Del Ran, uh, they did what they needed to do. They took care of their business and, and got some help. So, I think they're they're probably going to get in. But, you know, for a team to be six and one on the cutoff date and see what's in front of them, um, and and still have some doubts, uh, really shows some flaws in in the system. So, hopefully, that kind of gets itself ironed out. But. Uh, no, you know it's gonna, you know it's it's it, it's a waiting game. It's just a waiting game, and and uh, you know we'll know tomorrow morning probably. Uh, I guess the born the born information has to be up by about ten o'clock. So, I would say by uh, between ten and eleven, as soon as uh, it gets it gets posted, we'll have a better idea. So, Kevin, just to be clear for the fans out there, the the top sixteen teams in each group make it, so there'll be four rounds. Is that correct? No, it's a, you know we we it's. The state has been divided in half. Okay. And right now, you know, you have your north teams and your south teams. Essentially, the south is the south and central. Oh, and so it's so it's eight teams for for each, I guess. Okay, gotcha. Once 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 the sixteen teams, the qualifiers are in, then it will be broken down into south and central. Gotcha. So you know, right now, you know, all you were looking at was I want to be one of the top sixteen teams in my group, and then. From there, using the state system of, of geography, which is mind-boggling in itself sometimes, <laughs> um, they'll break down the South and the Central. So, uh, like I said, you know, you really you can only you can only look at this so far before you really have to just stop and wait until the numbers come in. So, in theory, for fans out there trying to understand it, there could be like, you know, say, in Group Three, there could be ten. Central teams and six South, and then they would divide it into eight, eight and eight. 
that's you can look at it that way. Yes. Okay. If, if you look, if, you know, you could look at it as ten. What, we, what I would say are traditional southern southern teams or traditional Central Jersey teams that might end up playing in a different group. And and the, the biggest example is probably Paulsboro. Uh, it looks like Paulsboro is probably going to be a number one seed, but they're going to be the number one seed in Central Jersey. Oh, okay. You know, if you can if you can understand that. So. <laughs> uh, you know, it, the, the numbers are the way that the, the geography is set up. It's 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 not that bad, but you know, when you stop and look at it and you kind of scratch your head, you know, Paulsboro is far from being a traditional Central Jersey school. So, but that's just the way it uh, it breaks down. And uh, you know, like I said, you know, we we sit and wait. Talk with Kevin Minnick of NJ Advance Media. Check out all his stuff on NJ dot com. And Kevin, who are some teams that jump out at you that are really playing well? at this time of year when you need to be. A couple that really jump out to me are Williamstown and Delcy. You can't deny what Williamstown has done. Um, you know, they give up the first touchdown last night to St. Augustine, and, uh, you know, St. Augustine had the first possession of the game. Williamstown comes down, eats up a bunch of time, ties it up in the, in the early in the second quarter. So, um, you know, Williamstown, we've been talking about them for a couple weeks now. I mean, you know, they, they are just the real deal, and, you know they get it done on both sides of the ball. They got uh, some experienced guys, you know, veteran guys, senior leadership that that's outstanding. And uh, you know, here's a team that we we said before three and seven two years ago, five and five, and and this year they've they've just flipped the whole thing and uh, are really really a, an entertaining team to watch on both sides of the ball and, and playing extremely well. And you know, you mentioned Delcy too. Delcy's a team that you know year after year for some reason. They always seem to have a, a slow start, you know, uh, in, in, and then, but then after three or four games, they, they kick it into another gear. And then when eight games, nine games are done, there's Delphi. So, uh, you know, right now, Delphi's a four and three team, uh, five and three team, um, sitting probably as a number two seed in, in South, you know, in South three. And, uh, you know, if there is a team come tournament time that I think you don't want to have to play, if you're in that group, it's Delcy. No, no matter what their record is, uh, Sal Marquez has that team ready to play, you know, championship winning football when the tournament comes around. So obviously a team to keep an eye on there too. And you know, and, and you look in the you look at in, in, in the in group two in the South, and um, two is loaded, and, and Haddonfield and Camden and West Deptford, and even teams like Cinnamons and in Pleasantville. Uh, you know, Camden, I think, or Haddonfield, I think, right now, you have to give the edge to. But Camden is right there. Um, you know, that that would be a, a really nice a nice game to see. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to all shake itself out. But, you know, there's just a couple handful of teams there. And, you know, you look at Group 1 and Penns Grove and Salem, they'll play this afternoon and uh, basically playing for the number one seed in South 1. So both two, those, those two teams are both scoring points like crazy. So we'll see what happens you know, what happens in this weather. Kevin, the one thing that jumps out to me about Delcy, especially in playoff football, is they're the type of team that can that can put together a 10, 12 play drive that lasts seven minutes, and now you got to go and kind of match that. And if you go three and out, now your defense is facing another eight, nine, ten play drive, and they can wear you out in the first quarter sometimes. They do, and, and, and they're methodical about it. And, you know, um, in, in – just about every year and just about every game, Delphi doesn't put the ball in the air. They're going to keep the ball on the ground. They're going to keep the clock going. And they do have one of the best running backs in the state, Naden Borget. So, you know, he's obviously, uh, you know, turned his game on a little bit more as the team has. And like you said, you know, Delphi is a team that's going to just grind it out. They're going to put together long, sustained drives. And, you know, uh, you keep the other team's offense off the field. You wear down the defense. And like you say, you know, you hold a team – on that next possession, and, and you get the ball back, Delphi's, those Delphi offensive linemen, they're not tired. They're, they're ready to go. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, if, if Borgett and, and uh, uh, Hannah pick up three and four yards at a time, you know, that's just grinding out first downs and moving the chain. So, yeah, Delphi's a team that obviously will, will take a lot of time off the clock. Here and there, they'll have a big play where, where Borgett will bust through that line and and pick up 30, 40, 50 yards. But for the most part, Delphi's a team that's going to grind it out, work the clock, and uh, you know pick their pick their opportunities. Kevin, okay, what about a team like Camden? Where, where's their confidence level? They always play great at home. 
Uh, is this a team that believes they can run the table and win that South Jersey group too? Yeah, you know, that's a team that's extremely confident. And uh, their one loss was to a defending state champion in Maryland to, to open the season. So they've ripped off seven in a row. They beat Willingboro last night. Um, you know, they're a team that uh, plays tremendous defense. You know, we talk, we've talked about other teams during the year, Williamstown, and the way it plays defense. But Cannon's right there, and, and uh, they've got athletes on that team. And they seem to have everything going, you know, in the right direction. But, you know, uh, They've, they've slipped up in the in the tournament from time to time in games where you kind of thought that you know they were the, the clear favorite and and they walk away with a with a loss but uh, you know Dwayne Savage has done, does has done a real nice job with them this year I think uh, I think they're confident I don't think they're overconfident um, I think they're a team that uh, definitely has the potential to make a run and get to that final and uh, they've got some athletes Tyreek Austin Cave is one of the the top uh, junior linebackers in the in the state, for that matter, and they've got some athletes and, and, and Monty Williams, a quarterback, distributing the ball to a, a handful of different kids. So, I think um, for Camden is 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 that they don't get too hyped up, they don't get too overconfident. If they can maintain a little bit more of an even keel than they have in the past, I think they're a team that uh, you know we could be watching come come that last weekend. Kevin, real quick, uh, we got about a minute or two before the break. Is there a particular bracket where you're kind of looking ahead and thinking, man, this could be a really fun playoff bracket to to see how it plays out? To be honest with you, no, I can't look ahead because I don't know what <laughs> I, I don't. I just don't know what these matchups are going to be. There, in the past, you could sit and and figure out what the power points were and, and get a very good idea of who was playing who and, and you know the whole bit. But this year, you just you just can't do it. But if you look at a specific group, I think Group Two. Is the is the one that you know uh, has will have the the really good matchups. Not that the other groups won't have good matchups, but I think Group Two um, from top to bottom is is pretty strong, and and we'll have some uh, some very good games. And uh, watch out in four for Millville. I think Millville is a, a team that uh, you know we 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 all looked at at zero and three to start the season, and and they took their lumps, but they played extremely difficult teams in St. Peter's Prep, and then. St. Joe and then Williamstown. All three of those teams are pretty good, and Millville hasn't uh, hasn't lost since. So, I think Dennis Thomas, when he scheduled St. Peter's Prep, knew exactly why he was going to do it. He picked up big time bonus, uh, big time power points in the game, um, and 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 that's a team that uh, you know sitting now at five and three is uh, is very very dangerous in Group Four. So, you know, well, like I said, wait till tomorrow, see how everything shakes out, and then. Uh, you know, we'll we'll be able to to take a look at a bracket and, and kind of play our little fantasy game. <laughs> good stuff as always, Kevin. We'll have a lot more to break down next week. We appreciate the time, man. Have a good weekend. All right, you too. Stay. Uh, try to stay dry. We'll do, man. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Bye bye.